Gil, good morning. Good morning. Buddy, I've got a question for you. Are you ready? Tell me. Tell me, which days are the strongest? Which days? Yeah, which days are the strongest? The strongest days. Uh, the last days? The last days? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll put you out of your misery. <laughs> Saturday and Sunday are the strongest because all the other days are weak days. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> terrible. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Atlanta. Good morning, Southeast. Good morning, East Coast, West Coast, wherever you are. Thank you for being here. Thank you for moving your calendar. Thank you for navigating through the internet and landing here on this Monday morning. It is a profound privilege for us to co connect with you in the mornings because we say over here, or at least we used to say over here, the way you start your day gives you the rest of your day and the way that you live today gives you the rest of your life. So let's start today with a profound and powerful way um, that we have overwhelming evidence that it, you, it will give you an unbelievable life. But before I do that, I just want to give you a context for today's conversation because I'm really excited about this. So have you ever heard the word... <laughs> I'm like, I'm like mucking around with my eye on with you guys. Sorry about that. Anyway, have you ever heard of the word taxes before? Have you ever paid taxes? Have you, what kind of relationship do you have with taxes? Is it something that empower you that you're like, yes, I'm so glad this is happening in my life. Or you try to avoid it no, somehow and it always catches up with you anyway. But today we're going to empower you to have a whole new relationship and be excited about it and take some advantages and maybe share it with your friends and family. Anyways, we're going to get into that in just a minute. But let's get us all primed and ready. Andrea, good morning. What time is it? Gio, the time is now. Now. Thank you, Andrea. The time is now. Ronald, good morning, Ronald. I have two questions for you, Ronald. Good morning, my Where brother. Where are you, Ronald? And one thing you're grateful for. Oh, where I am. I am exactly where I'm supposed to be. And today, I'm grateful for taxes. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Yes, you know, it, it, they do a it lot keep of me, things. It that, keep me in line. I'm grateful for taxes. In line. They also fix a lot of the streets. They also pay for the firefighters. They all they do a lot of great things that I don't have to be worried about. So uh, it is. There's a lot of things to be grateful for. So Ray, I'm going to ask you two questions. Fire away, Gio. How are you, Sorel? And how are things? I am the way I say I am. I am generous, alive, and powerful. And that's the way I say I am. Love it. And how are things, Sorel? And in the mix, tell us who are you going to hug today? See this cup, buddy? It's just the way it is. And so are all other things. Things are just the way they are. And that's the way it is. And awesome. today I'm going to hug my very good friend, Lee Rosenblum from a distance because today he's our he's our speaker today right Lee <laughs> so let me tell you guys a little bit about Lee Rosenblum uh, Lee's an investment advisor representative an insurance broker and a fiduciary affiliated with Transamerica Financial Advisors and World Financial Group 
is here today, of course, to speak about your favorite subject, taxes, taxes. And he wants to ask this question. Are tax rates today higher or lower than in the past? Well, Lee has a master's degree in social work and a master's degree in nonprofit management. And for 30 years, he was a nonprofit fundraiser and conducted campaigns in excess of a quarter of a billion dollars. Now, that's billions with a B. So Lee knows a thing or two about paying or not paying taxes. <laughs> and so here he is. Good morning, Lee. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Good morning. You know, the sun is just not even come up yet here. <laughs> well, the left coast has an advantage over us, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I still have my uh, my blinds closed, which I probably should open a minute, but except the sun will, in the next half hour, the sun will stream right on my face. So otherwise, that's why I have to have it closed. The sun, the sun comes right, will be right there in about 10 minutes. <laughs> well, Lee, we, let's dive into this uh, conversation, right? Are income tax rates high or low compared to rates in the past? What do you want to say about that? So first of all, I hope that my computer works for the whole half hour. As I told you, uh, uh, the internet service provider, I don't know, for whatever reason, I've had problems with Zoom the last few days. So I'm gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna have to pray for the next half hour or so. Uh, here, here's, the, here's the question really is, we're talking about federal income tax, federal income taxes. And of course, everybody has to pay them. And everybody has to figure out by April 15th what they're going to pay. And everybody needs to needs to figure out how to file those all those forms. And there's a lot of work that goes into it. There are people, as you know, they're full-time profession. They're experts. They have master's degrees in filing taxes and figuring out your taxes. I don't do that. But what I do is I talk to people about whether they want to pay taxes or not. So Sorel, I mean, it, all things being equal, would you like to pay more taxes or less? Well, all things being equal, given the type of citizen that I am, I'll answer that it depends. If I live in a place where, uh, you know, I, I want services and taxes is what funds the services, I'll gladly pay taxes. But you know what? I'd also love to keep the majority of my income. Yeah, by, by the way, this is not the conversation that I was uh, suggesting, and maybe this could be another time, but I know from surveys that people say all the time, if they understood where their money was going, and if they didn't think there was a major philosophical or moral objection, they wouldn't have any. Uh, they wouldn't feel so bad about paying taxes. It's the fact that most people don't really know where the money goes, and also, you know, over time, oh, I don't like this, or I don't like that, or the governor did this, or the pre and then then people get it. Their their uh, knickers in a twist over taxes. But on average, most people would say, oh, I don't mind paying my taxes if, 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 if they're fair and if uh, I understand where it all goes and if it doesn't uh, run up against my moral or philosophical beliefs. So that, but that's, that could be for another time. And, and that would, that's not my expertise anyway. So the expertise I wanna to bring to you today is the question, in serious, serious question, are taxes high now or, or, or are they taxes low now compared to the past? So uh, I have, uh, I'm going to show you a chart. All I'm going to do in the next 12 minutes is show you a chart. And we're going to walk through that chart. So, but let will ask you then, Sorel, you haven't seen the chart. So I'm going to ask you, do you think taxes are high now compared to the past or low now compared to the past? I'm venturing a guess. I'm saying based on inflation and all kinds of other things, tax rates are virtually the same. Okay, so let's delve into this. I'm gonna show you a chart so you understand. Now, the, the reason we're gonna do this and the, the jumping off point after this conversation is, do you wanna find ways to pay less income tax? That's the real question that I would have for my clients, which you're not, but we're just having a, just a general conversation. And let me just uh, mention that because I'm a fiduciary, I can't do anything today that's specific to you, Andrea, or you, Sorel, because, or you, Ronald, or anybody else here, I, everything I do is highly specific to the individual. So these these kind of conversations are just very general. Is that fair, Sorel? Can we kind of do it on that level? That's totally fair. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a chart. And the chart is, 
the historical tax rates. Uh, I'm not, I'm gonna make, I made this as big as I can, uh, but I'm not sure how big it, it looks on your screen. Do you see it? It looks good. Okay, good. Very good. So uh, look to the left. I'm going to put where my cursor is. Nobody paid federal income tax until, I mean, it, you can't quite see. Did, did anybody know when we started paying federal income tax in, in this country? Right here, America. It was 1916. And I'm pretty sure it was the 16th Amendment to the Constitution that allowed the federal government to charge income tax. As we're talking about federal, we're talking about state, because I live in a high tax state. You live in a no tax. I mean, some people live in a no tax state, Florida, <laughs> a no tax state, the no state tax state. California also has high state income tax. I'm going to talk about federal income tax today. So the the orange line. The orange line represents the marginal rate that you pay when you pay your federal income taxes. Now, we have a graduated tax system. Does anybody know, raise your hand, do you know what, anybody know what graduated tax, what it, what it means to have a graduated tax system? Okay, so what that means essentially is the total amount, total, uh, total amount, the total amount you pay, whatever that is, is not necessarily the amount you pay on every dollar you earn. So the way it works in this country is, and I don't, I'm not a tax advisor and I didn't bring that chart, but here's in general how it works. The first few dollars you make, let's just say the first $10,000 you make, you do not pay any income, any income tax. Nobody pays income tax on like the first $10,000. Then on the next, if I'm not mistaken, 15,000, you pay 10% of that. So you've paid zero on the first 10, 10% on the next 15. Then on the next 15, you pay 25% of 22% of that. And then on the, on the next 25, you pay 25% of that. So the point is the first dollars you make, you pay nothing. Then the next dollars you pay a little more, on that, not, a, not the whole thing, on that. Then on the next group, you pay a little more of that on that amount, not in the whole thing. And then the last dollar, it's called the last dollar is the marginal rate. So if you made the most, uh, which is the highest rate, I think is uh, 250 or I can't remember exactly, but I'm not doing, I'm a tax, not a tax advisor, but the last rate, the highest rate would something be something like <clears throat> uh, over $250,000 or something like that. So if you make over 250, you're going to pay the highest tax rate only on that money over 250, right? It's not on the whole thing you've earned. That's the important part about the graduated tax rate. Now let me talk about the chart. In, in, in 1916, the federal government started making everybody pay federal income tax, and they were pretty low. They were 8%. Can anybody see my, pers my cursor around 8%? Yeah. Okay. Then... In night, what happened? What happened in the world in 1917? What was going on in 1917? Come on, guys. This is a participation. It's very simple. What was going on world, in this world? In, in world, world War One. World War One. Exactly right. So, when a government engages in war, they have to pay for it. Correct? No, we do. Okay, here we go. You're right. We do. So they charged us. They charge those who lived here, you know, with probably my grandparents, let's see, my, some of my grandparents were here. Some of your grandparents may not have been here. They had to pay for World War I. And so the marginal tax rate shot up from 8% to about almost 80%, 80%. So the people who were making the most money, they had to pay 80% of that last, the last dollars, don't forget, the last dollars to the federal government for income tax. Then in the, in the 30s, we had the depression. During the depression, the tax rates went down because people weren't make, were making less money. And then, of course, comes 1943. Since we talked about World War I in uh, 1917, it's easy to, to, to remember, surmise, that this is, the, this is the spike during World War II. The top tax rate was, and you can't see it, but I'm going to tell it to you. Is everybody sitting down? I'm gonna sit, you got to sit down for this number now. The top tax rate was 94.1%. 94% you were paying to the government. 
Now, how would that, Gio, how would you feel if you thought I had to pay 94 cents of every dollar I made to the government? Feel like a slave. Exactly. And incidentally, this is, this is the story of Ronald Reagan, by the way. This is the Ronald Reagan story. He, tell, he used to tell it all the time. Here's the story. He was a Democrat, as you probably know, and he was happy to be a Democrat. But, you know, during during World War II, he was one of the highest paid actors in Hollywood, if you didn't know that, highest paid. And in January or February, he paid taxes uh, in the first uh, group, maybe, you know, 20 percent of, of his income went to taxes. Then in April, May and June, uh, 25 percent of that went to taxes. And then July, August and September and uh, uh, October, a fifty percent went to taxes, and then November, December, ninety percent of what he what he earned in the last part of his the year, he had to pay the taxes. Do you understand? That's how the graduated rate works. Do you understand, Sorrell? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's why he says he used to say all the time, "I didn't want to work in November. I didn't want to work in December. It made no sense for me. I want to take those. It, it was stupid for me to work because if I got a paycheck in December." The government took 94% of that paycheck. And that's one of the main reasons he became a Republican. Because he realized that the uh, government was not the answer. Well, I'm not going to get to his politics. But if you remember, that's really where he, where he went. So anyway, that's World War II. This, I'm putting my cursor, this represents the Vietnam War. The Vietnam War, the top, top tax rate was 77%. 77%. 77 now, by the way, Here's the here's the Reagan revolution right here. See my where my cursor is. This is a this, well actually Reagan is right right about here. You guys know he, he started bringing the tax rates down. Okay, now here's the question of the day. I'm going to ask again, Sorrell, our tax and oh by the way, and so here today roughly this is 2010, so we're right about here still. So our taxes compared to the past, our taxes today higher or lower than the past? In the past, based they're on lower the than, past. they're lower than the past, exactly. So then, the then the question that uh, I talk to my clients about is: Well, are taxes going up or going down? Are we likely to pay more taxes in the future or less taxes in the future? Does anybody have any thoughts on that? It depends on which war we go to and which war we choose to fight. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> great, great, great answer. How about that? <laughs> it's a great answer. And well, it, you, know, you don't have to have a hot war for the government to spend trillions of dollars. So the government spends trillion dollars on all kinds of programs. And I'm not talking about just the defense. We're talking about bailouts. Every time there's a bailout, how much do you think is going to cost to bail out student, student loans? going to cost between 500 million and four and four five 500 billion and four trillion to bail out student loans well how much how much does it cost to bail out the banks which we have done a okay. million times there you go so I student loans are small we tend to look at that but what about banks well right but that uh, the banks were uh in 19 uh 2008 now we're facing other kinds of things Sa same same concept mm -hmm. the government decides to spend money and they're like you said, Ronald. Whose money are they spending, Ronald? Ours. That's exactly right. I'm sorry, so, Ronald. I became Ronald for a moment. I'm sorry, Ronald. Okay. <laughs> that was a good call because Ronald had to leave. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Well, exactly. They're spending your money. So every time that government decides to make bailouts or spend a lot of money, they're spending your money, and that's so. Now the question, back to the last question, is: Are taxes going up or down? Now I didn't show you here the uh, debt clock. Does it? Has anybody seen the debt clock before? Okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I should have done this, uh, but we don't have enough time. You can go and look. Uh, type in your browser debt clock. It'll show you all of the the government debt to the penny. The the second and it, it, it's it's a running clock. So the number keeps going up really fast right now. By the way, that debt clock also tell you how, tells you how many people are in the they're in the country, a population. It tells you about uh, 20 or 30 different interesting things, but it'll tell you how much debt we're in. And the debt is going up. Now, what is, how do we get out of debt? How, do, how, do, how does the government deal with that? Well, there's only one way to do that, is to 
for taxes. The government's, oh, are you going to get it, Sorrell? The only, there you go. There you go, hunt. Oh, you're, you're, you're wonderful. So the current, the U.S. national debt is now $30 trillion. And what that means is uh, that uh, uh, is 20, 242,000 per taxpayer. So I owe the government right now $242,000. Where do you think I'm going to get it? I don't know. But that's what I owe the, gov owe the government. Everybody does. So who knows what's going to happen in the future? Now, can you pull this down? Because I want to have a, a – so the question then is, if, the, if taxes are going up in the future and you saw the chart already and you see right now the top, top tax rate is about 38%, what do you do? How do you plan? What, do you, what happens then? What happens when you retire and the government starts taking 50 or 60% of you, whatever, you, whatever you retired on to, to live off, to, for them to live off of? So the, the bottom line, bottom line end story is everybody ought to consider how to get income, maximize their income such that that income is not taxed at all. So if you have 401k income, if you have pension income, or if you have uh, income, you earned income through real estate or whatever, when you retire, you're going to make taxes on all that. That's the federal tax rate. How do you create income that you'd never have to pay taxes on? How much of your income would you want to not have to pay taxes on? Would you want half, a quarter, a third? Most people want some of their income such that that income is not taxed. And that's the strategy working with, uh, with, with a financial advisor. Those are the things that we help people do. We situate their investments, situate the things so that when they retire, a portion could be a big portion is totally tax free. I'm going to tell you once a couple stories real quickly. There is a program called the Roth IRA. I imagine everybody has heard of the Roth IRA, and I really hope everybody has a Roth IRA. The Roth IRA is the most popular way to save in such a way that you never have to pay taxes. So let's, let's just say you invested the maximum amount you could invest today in a Roth IRA. And if you're under 50, I think it's $6,000 a year. If you're, old, if, if you're older, there's catch up. It's either 6,000 or 6,500 to, to today. I'm not a tax advisor, so I don't really talk about taxes too much. So if you invested $6,000 today in, let's just say Google for the sake of argument, and you can do that. You could buy $6,000 worth of Google stock put it in your Roth IRA. And let's just say in 40 years, that appreciates like Google has appreciated. That's because Google just split 20, 20 to one. So let's just say, let's just say it goes up, I don't know, five times between now and the time you retire from 6,000 to 30,000. Everybody, everybody tracking me on the story here, Sorrell, right? So you've bought $6,000 worth of Google stock. You put it in your Roth IRA because it's under the limit and you let it sit in your Roth IRA for 20 or 30 years. When you take it out, it's, you have $30,000 in it. So you've earned $25,000 on that. If it's in the Roth IRA, you don't pay taxes on any of it, zero any of it. What that means is if your investment appreciates a great deal, you have hit the jackpot. You've taken your $6,000 in uh, year 2022 20, and when you retire in 20, I don't know, 52, you have $30,000 you never have to pay taxes on. That's the most common way to keep, have income that never have to pay taxes. There's a guy who named Peter Thiel, T-H-E-I-L or I-E-L, I -E -L, can't remember. Peter Thiel was one of the very first inv investors in a little company called eBay, eBay. And he, inv he invested, now this is when a Roth IRA, limits were less than 6,000. I'm pretty sure they were $2,500. Okay, here's a true story, guys. This is a true story. So he invested $2,500 in eBay. This is like on day one. You know what that's worth now? About a half a billion dollars. Guess what? It's all not taxable. All not taxable because he invested the minimum, the maximum amount of the year that he had the Roth IRA which is about $2,500, and this goes back 30 years. And since it's split so many times and been bought so many other times, it's worth a, 
I mean, I, don't quote me on the exact numbers, but it's worth millions and millions and millions. And it's still never taxable. That is the Roth IRA story. And a lot of people who are successful, the Warren Buffets of the world, we're coming to the end, they have found a way to put a little money in the Roth IRA today so that you never have to pay taxes ever again. Sorrell, I'm done. Good deal. I know you're done because you're probably going to turn into a pumpkin in about two minutes. Questions, comments, and anything for Mr. Lee Rosenblum before he splits. Well, Lee, I don't think there's any time to ask you any questions because you have to split at 9.29. But uh, thank you for this conversation. It was uh, it was it was way more refreshing than I expected it to be. And, uh, and <laughs> it was I loved actually it. fun, huh? It was fun. It was fun to, to see the history of taxes and where we're at right now and what could bring it up, what could bring it down. And, uh, and what's predictable, right? We could see a certain predictability, but um, nothing is predictable anymore, but everything is, I don't know what to say about that. So thank you, Lee. Thank you for being here. Sorrel, anything you wanna say to close Lee up? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, I, I just wanna put a dot on top of the I you placed in the room, Lee, is that tax rates are lower than they were in the past. And they're that way because the government uses our money through taxes to fund wars and other things that uh, we need to fund collectively. So uh, given that we're good citizens and also responsible human beings who love our families and want to create legacies, the best thing to do is to make sure that you invest some money, a whole bunch if you can, in a vehicle that leaves you protected from paying taxes on the capital gains you make. Yes, sir. And one of them is a Roth IRA. So well, Lee, thank you so much for that. And okay. uh, we'll be seeing you really soon. Hope to see you back tomorrow. Tomorrow, the Daily Huddle will be on. Mr. Vince Roundtree and Roland Venata will be here for part two of Blood Pressure. Well, how do you prevent blood pressure? And what are those things that you're doing today that keep you at risk for having high blood pressure? Uh, In other words, host, having heart attacks, because most of us don't know what that means. <laughs> stroke, stroke. <laughs> from getting strokes, heart attacks. Yeah, you know. from dying oh. early, from being paralyzed, all the consequences that come with that. And... Uh, Giovanni, thank you for being my partner and co-host of the Daily Huddle. Andrea, thank you for being a faithful habit creator. <laughs> the owner of the phrase, it's uh, the Daily Huddle is a good habit to have. So we'll close today with this, uh, love, love always. You know, you can manage to love taxes too. Laugh, laugh out loud. We create the opportunity for you to do that by being not so funny with a dad joke every morning. So join us here to get a belly laugh. Uh, stress less, you know. I woke up this morning and I'm grateful for that. You did, I'm grateful for that. Many, many of us didn't wake up this morning. So enjoy your life, stress less. Eat mostly plant-based. You know, if you're gonna live your life, you might as well live a healthy one. And eating mostly plant-based creates that for you. Give what you've got, sleep. And last but not least, move like your life depends on it because it does. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Thank you. Thank you guys. Bye Thank guys. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you everyone.